I, I, I'm going to say that was a treat. Thank you. <laughs> it is our pleasure. I'm going to go on the record as saying that's yeah. appreciated. <laughs> does he have a TikTok where he does that often? Because I could uh, I subscribe. Need to subscribe. He should just take his shirt off over and over and over again. And that could just be a whole TikTok. I'm just saying. Hey everybody, welcome to Time Culture. I am King Cadet, and today, guys, I am so excited. I am joined by the fabulous Patty Hawkins. How you doing, Patty? Hello, my dear. How have you been? I'm better now. And uh, before we started, I like what you said. You said you feel like you are in a. a I feel like I'm in the back seat of my own car because I'm, I'm so used to uh, streaming this platform and everything else. And it's just like, oh, wow, I don't have to give the spiel at the beginning. I don't have to go all this stuff. I don't know. Hey, friends and fans, welcome to it. Oh, this, this, this is your show. This is your gig. And and and, and let me just say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of, of what you built here. You've done a really good thing. And uh, you, you and Jude have just, you're building this, you continue to build this. And I'm so happy for you. And you're doing some really, really good work here. And I can't wait to see what, where 2022 takes this, takes this for you. Ah, you're getting me all emotional before we even begin. Thank you, no. for that, Patty. I I respect the heck out of you. And um, we're so excited. And I think it's awesome that we have Patty here today because today we are talking all things surviving Supercon. That's right, guys. This film comes out on November 9th, which is only a few short days away. So without any further ado, let's welcome our guests. We have Stephen Shea and Sandy Martin. Hello. Hi. What's up? How are you guys? <laughs> Good. Awesome. Were you terrified by the jazz hands that everybody gave? <laughs> 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 like, huh. this, whole, this whole new Zoom world is so strange and alien to me. <laughs> uh, you're so used to recording everything and tinkering and editing it afterwards and all this live. I'm a much more behind the camera kind of person. <laughs> For sure. Well, we are thrilled to have you now in front of the camera. And I guess kind of just to get started, Sandy and Steven, we kind of want to know when the two of you guys met and if you remember, you know, when you initially met. That's a good question. I don't, <laughs> I'm trying to remember, Sandy. I'm sure it was at a super con. I feel like I met you at Myth briefly. Oh, that's probably true. Melbourne Independent Filmmakers Festival that a mutual yeah. friend of ours, Terry Cronin, runs, yeah. who is always a guest at the conventions as yeah. well. Yeah, that's probably true. In the mid 2000s somewhere? I, I don't know. Maybe. But but Stephen has been a figure in in our lives for a long time because of Terry. So he's like the cousin who lives far away that you hear about all the time and you feel like you already know. And so when he showed up at the office to start filming, I mean, I think that was the first time we really started to talk. Did we connect before yeah. that outside of a phone call? Not not really, no. I mean, we had hung out multiple times, but that was definitely, shooting this project was definitely the most intimate uh, we have ever been. Yeah. So Steven, uh, I'm assuming, was it your idea to actually film Surviving Supercon? And, and how did it all come to be? And how did you approach Sandy and Mike as well? It was actually the opposite of that. Uh, they approached me about filming a documentary, kind of having an idea that this may or may not be their last Supercon. And so they wanted, a, you know, kind of a documentary about what they had built from from the ground up, because this was the 12th year of the show, which started very small and now it's is massive. And so they wanted to kind of cover that. It, it's funny to me because I literally showed up five days before the show, not really having too much of a major plan, having been to Supercon multiple times in the past, but not following exactly what each and every person there does. So we had, it was, it was pretty interesting. Um, and for anyone that is not aware of what we're talking about, Surviving Supercon is a new documentary that's coming out next week on the 9th that follows um, Mike Sandy Broder, who run the Florida Supercon. And we went, we followed them nonstop for four days straight, seeing all of the insane, crazy stuff that happens behind the scenes. It's definitely a, a complete behind the scenes documentary instead of in front of the scenes. So it's a, a pretty solid nuts and bolts approach of how of how the convention is run. 
but they had contacted me at the time being like, Hey, we're thinking about, you know, doing this documentary. They had had a Supercon movie come out prior, like a Hollywood Supercon movie. Um, and I think they kind of wanted to do their like own. They like it. <laughs> so, Schroeder didn't like Spoiler it. Alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. It was uh, not good. <laughs> and, uh, and so this was kind of their chance to showcase their story from their side of it, which was the goal of this movie. And, um, and so we showed but, up. But I, and think it's, I think it's fair to say that the, that the documentary didn't actually have a, a thread or a purpose until the show was over because we just wanted to document it. And Stephen could have said at the end of the weekend, there's nothing here. And that's happened before. People have been followed around conventions and it's been boring as fuck. I mean, it's just really bad. Mm -hmm. um, but ours was pretty exciting. And he was like, you know, I think there's a story here. And Steven is not a documentarian. He's a filmmaker. He's a storyteller. And he found the story. And then the vision really came out of that. And we were like, go, do. I, uh, I remember... 2016 ish. I was just hanging around at the offices and there was stuff. There was just stuff going on. And then I remember asking Mike, I was like, So when are you going to do the reality show about this place? Because <laughs> this, there's some good craziness going on here. And he was like, oh. <laughs> He just had that look like, I've got an idea, but I'm not ready to share it yet. You know? <laughs> well, Dana Snyder had pitched the idea of doing a reality show about our office. Ooh. And I I was going through my old SD cards and clearing them off before a trip I just took. And I found video we took of ourselves working in the office and conversations we were just having and trying to be natural. And it was not natural and not interesting. And, you know, we had to explain to Dana that even though it seems like we're in chaos and screaming all day, really, we sit and stare at our computers all day. Not until we get into the show that we start screaming all day. <laughs> no, it, it, it is such a well-oiled machine. And that's why you guys have been so successful is because you like all the little working parts are what create this, you know, fabulous outcome. But like you guys were saying, there was a lot that happened during the Supercon weekend. Well, so I'll add ahead. this, that it is a well-oiled machine, but the terrain it's built to go across is trepidatious. <laughs> Rocky, cavernous, fraught with danger, fraught with, uh, with uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a crazy Preach. environment. And this is what creates the adventure that you, that, that Steven managed to capture. It, yeah. I kind of think of it like an 18 wheeler where it's like, you have an 18 wheeler and then a wheel falls off and they're like, well, we have 17 more wheels. And then a couple <laughs> more wheels fall off and you're like, we're technically okay. So, <laughs> it's uh, uh, quite a ride. For both of y'all, what would you say was the first moment that weekend, if you can even remember? Because like I said, there was a lot going on that you're like, oh my gosh, we have something here. <laughs> well, the security room. <laughs> I was going to yeah, say that exact sure. same thing. Yeah. yeah. There was a, a security meeting on the first day that when people, we've shown the documentary to people, usually we get gasps and jaws dropped and holy shit, you know, kind of scenarios um, over the sequence. That was, I, that was where the movie kind of took a, not a necessarily a dark turn, but like, this is going to be a crazy weekend. <laughs> That's <laughs> when my sure. life took a dark turn. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, well, surviving it, Supercon is not just a film coming out next week. It's kind of the story of my life. I'm still surviving supercon i'm trying to get through the chaos of what well, it once was and that was a big a big thing to me you know when we were designing the movie was we need to showcase these characters because in a movie you still have characters even though it's a documentary so we showcase mike and sandy's past and josh's past and kind of follow through them so that by the time the show starts you know these people really well a lot more so than if you saw them run by in the middle of the convention so then when you see them go through the trauma of the weekend by the fourth day where Sandy is just barely standing at that point because <laughs> they're so exhausted. Um, it really is a crazy roller coaster that you get to experience from a different angle. And this, this was kind of a, the tail. things have leveled out now, but uh, one thing I just noticed in the conventioning world was that was close to the tail end of when 
a lot of people were the uh, convention during a history of the zeitgeist to public awareness. So there's a lot of these really small shows with lofty ambitions and people really thinking, Oh, we'll do a show. We'll get this one celebrity. We'll make a million dollars. And it's like, you guys don't know what goes on to build this. Do you? And it, it it's, it, it's so bizarre. Cause people are like, no one goes to Walt Disney world and thinks, says we could do this. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah, but for some for some reason, you know, events like events like this, people just again they don't realize how many parts and how many and the challenges. And I that, that's what I love about this film. It it really gives people just enough to be thrilling and just enough to be like that is so fascinating. I would never do this. I would go to this, but I don't think I could I I could handle juggling all those chainsaws. Yeah. Like yeah, we- I don't think about shows and think I could do it. I just look at it and go, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, because <laughs> it is a reality that has to be done. And, we had one yeah. reviewer that had an anxiety attack watching the movie that literally had to pause it. <laughs> so so that movie. makes two because I had the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had an anxiety attack. <laughs> it's, it's definitely pretty crazy. So for, and for me, surprising because I've been to conventions my whole life, and I was kind of like, okay, I'm I'm assuming our worst case scenario is you know William Shatner's gonna be mad about a sandwich or something, and that, <laughs> that is not even remotely the case. I mean, we don't have any celebrity stories in it because there weren't any issues there. It was it was so many other crazy things that happened, and and in the country too, like there was a lot of really strange things happening in the country that weekend that also influenced how the convention was happening. So. It's very interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and you mentioned the reviews, Stephen, and I, I've read a couple of them, and everyone really seems to be enjoying this film so far. And I think going into it, people aren't going to know what to expect. Like you said, there's just so much happening, and all of the reviews are like, wow, like this is what really happens <laughs> at a convention. It's like, it's, it's, it's pretty insane. But yeah. Someone called me a whirling dervish of OCD. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> and I thought, yeah, only at conventions. Oh, that should be on your business cards. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, hmm, I don't know whether I've heard that expression before, but sure. It's good word use. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sandy, do you actually mind telling us a little bit about when you first entered the convention business and now being the co-founder of GalaxyCon? I think. The most appropriate way to say I entered the convention business is to say I set up as a vendor. So I wasn't in really involved, but I had a comic book store mm-hmm. and I set up as a vendor and I was running two rooms and a booth at one of Mike's shows. We were friends and um, I had I was passing out bags to all of the attendees to drive traffic to my comic book store. And so I stood at the front of the, that show personally and made sure every single person had a bag from my store so that they would go to my store. And so I was kind of the greeter of that show in 2008 at the Weston Bonaventure. And um, then by, that was May of 2008, by November, Mike and I were dating and anyone who's in Mike's circle is absorbed into the convention world. There's no, there's no other way around it. Yeah. And obviously you're a woman of many hats. You, I mean, you, and especially you'll see this in the film when something goes wrong, you're literally in, this is in the trailer as well, mid bite. And you're like, I have to go fix it. <laughs> what, I, what, what, I like, put down the pineapple because it would take too long to chew. I grabbed the blueberries and ran. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and I don't think people realize, like you, and I don't want to misquote you, Sandy, but there is a beautiful quote that you say in in the movie that it's passion, right? That helps you, you know. It's not up. passion. It's not yeah. passion. That it's makes obsession. You, it's obsession. Yeah. People think that it's passion. People say, "Oh, this must be what you're passionate about," and I say, "No, I'm obsessed," and that's it. Takes obsession because all of the little things just don't really fall together because you want them to, or because you like what you're doing. They fall together because you're meticulously making sure that it's all handled. And um, yeah, it's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So 
what now, Sandy, as an insider and Stephen, as someone coming in to document the process, what would you both say is the biggest misconception about running a convention? That it's fun. <laughs> Was that too true? <laughs> no, because you, you have a different, you, you're looking at it with a different set of eyes than we are. Yeah. So understandably so. Stephen, yeah, what do you we, think? Yeah, we... Some? exist to enable other people to have fun. And so we do whatever it takes to enable the fun of other people. And, you know, it's a bonding experience and it's like, it's like going to battle and it's, there's, you know, these are our troops, we're in it together. And, you know, we've been in it with the two of you. I mean, you guys have hosted panels and um, celebrities on stage and helped behind the scenes and you know what it's like to run. It's, it's not just me. I mean, you guys have been the face of the conventions for quite some time. And honestly, that, that, that was one thing about the, about the film when I first saw it. Cause I kind of stayed away from the details. I wanted to see it with a clear thing. I was like, I was there when all this happened that we see in the, in the film and I was oblivious mm -hmm. to all of it. Yes. You know, literally to all of it, all of the problems, all the issues and, and everything on else. And, and again, I was just, I was just the cog over here and, and cadet was doing their things. And again, that's, that's the enormity in the scope of, of, of what the team had built. And it's, it's, it's a testament to it too. It's just like, Oh, you know, Oh yeah. yeah this is a problem in the fourth life. Well, I'm down here in the engine room. I'm shoveling the coal. I, <laughs> yeah, you know, so, did we win the war? Oh, nice. I can stop now. Okay. And it's a whole point about the, the war metaphor. I think it's all about, it's about the completion of it. I think that's where, it's yeah. where we get the joy. It's, it's where we're doing this. You're doing this for, for the, for the, the, the fans, the customers, even the guests, the vendors, we want the vendors to have a good time. It's all about facilitating everybody else's. And then when it's done, then it's like, ah, Although again, and I won't won't say where, but there's there's a point, there's a point in in the film, which is my favorite part, where you talk about your favorite part of mm -hmm. the day at a show, and I think that's that I think honestly, out of everything in the film, that's a testament to you and how I've come to know you. Oh, that's really nice. I'd say my favorite part in the film is hugging Howard Chaykin at the end. A hug from Uncle yeah. Howard is also good too. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that Jude is commenting on is never having more miles on my shoes in my life than at a convention. <laughs> and I, I think this is something that we even see with Josh, who's also in the documentary, is mm -hmm. him sprinting. And I'm sure Sandy, yeah. you certainly know. And Steven, I'm sure you have learned you definitely get your steps in at a convention. Yeah, they. I think all the staff has a contest by the end of the weekend. They, yeah. they usually have the contest who walks the most. And I, I want to say like it was ludicrous because Josh won, but it was something like forty something miles that he had walked in four days. Like it was oh, like more unfathomable. in four days. He's doing a marathon a day, isn't he? Yeah, I think he. Some days he does twenty six miles. Wow. Yeah, and that's crazy. I've, like in what I've building? I've done nineteen. Back in when we were at the Miami Beach Convention Center a few years ago, and I want to say in 2016 when we took over also the um, next door, the Fillmore, I think that year I did 19 miles a day. That was a lot. Yeah. Wow. At some point, yeah. once we moved to that building, and I can't remember if it was 2014 or 2015, people, we, we used to be in small buildings. People would say, hey, meet me at such and such place so we can discuss this thing. And I would go. And then in, when a building is 500,000 square feet, you just can't go. No. <laughs> Every time someone says, I'm clear on the other side, meet me here. I was like, can we talk on the phone? <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't step. helped you with Labyrinthian, like the uh, like the rally <laughs> venue, which still doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, geez. Stairs go down here and, and nowhere. The elevators like, don't. The elevators to nowhere. Are nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, I was so like, sorry. <laughs> So this I have elevator goes from three to one, but doesn't stop at two. Literally. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to keep right. it interesting. I got yeah. trapped so many times in that building. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, I have I a was, surprise. Oh, I have I was, a surprise I just want to say that. Go ahead.
Steven is now the most comforting person for me to be around in a convention <sighs> because he's the only person who truly knows me. But like, there's not another human who has seen me go through what I've gone through. And you get a glimpse in the film and, and he, he did a really great job of showing the emotion of, of that, you know, the rise and fall of all of the emotions that I have in a weekend. But even, even seeing the film and even all of the friends I have who see me there and even my husband who's now working, you know, on the other side of the building, nobody knows me like Steven. It's just a whole different experience to follow someone for four days. And that's what we had. We had four different camera teams at the show. And so I followed Sandy for the whole weekend. We had someone following Josh and someone following Mike. And then we had a fourth that would get B-roll and, and different shots around the building. So it was funny. I remember the first night, I think it was like 10 or 11 o'clock. And I mentioned to Sandy, I'm like, all right, well, you know, I think I'm going to head back to the hotel. And she's kind of like, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> we just have a few more hours to go. And it's like, oh, yeah, Sandy, okay. Did you sleep? I mean, yeah. I usually get about two to four hours a night, which is respectable mm. for a show. We didn't shoot the sleeping. I guess we, we missed yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Well, Steven, how, how much, how many, how many hours worth of raw footage do you think you ended up with? We had eight terabytes of footage from the show and 16 hours of interviews from wow. just from five days total. Like we shot, it's interesting because we shot everyone's interviews before the show, except for Mike's. And then we shot Mike's interview after the show. So he can kind of walk us through all the different crazy things. And he didn't even know about half of them that had happened. Um, <laughs> and I think, I, I think Sandy, you had mentioned at one point where you, like we saw other people at the show and you're like, I didn't even know that person did that. Or this person was over here. And it was like, no one knows where everybody is at all times. Cause it's such a huge, right. huge yeah. building and 60,000 people stuck in the middle of it. Yeah. Well, real quick guys, we have a surprise guest that we're about to bring on Sandy in the uh, trailer you mentioned, very important part of the weekend, was you had to go see Star-Lord with his shirt off. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream at this time, Star-Lord with his oh shirt off. Oh, my goodness. Hey, there he is. Hey, Kaylin. Hey, guys. I'm just over here working out now. Trying to get <laughs> Appreciate you, Caleb. So, uh, oh now, now that we have Caleb I'm here, <laughs> Like, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, Caleb, we appreciate you being here. Uh, we wanted to mention, obviously, a big part of the documentary was FSCW, which is Fantasy Super Cosplay Wrestling, which you can only see now at GalaxyCon. Uh, there at SuperCon. And Caleb, we were so happy to have you be part of the whole weekend. So thank you so much. I'm always happy to be a part of it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Star Lord with his shirt off. There he is. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm not oh, I love it. <laughs> really great. <That's> amazing. <laughs> All right, Caleb. Good to see you. See you. Bye. Good to see you. Enjoy your workout. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Sorry, guys. I was like, we got to get Caleb in real quick. But I, I, I'm going to say that was a treat. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it is our pleasure. I'm going to go on the record as saying that's yeah. appreciated. <laughs> Does he have a TikTok where he does that often? Because I could uh, I subscribe. Need to subscribe. He should just take his shirt off over and over and over again, and that could just be a whole TikTok. I'm just saying, putting it out there in the universe. Yeah, yeah. Oh, crazy! Oh, All right, so yes. Now we're trying to get back on track if we if we possibly can. Uh, <laughs> Steve and I are okay. What do you say about that? <laughs> So exciting. There's all, oh, it's always something at SuperCon, GalaxyCon that jumps out at you, you know. There's always yeah. full of surprises. <laughs> so uh, besides that moment, uh, obviously there was a lot of incredibly rewarding moments in the film. And just, you know, running a convention in general. So Sandy, what would you say has been one of the most rewarding moments for you uh, overall being part of the convention world? You know, it's it's really when people come up and say that they grew up with the show. And, you know, there have been a couple of situations where people, especially from South Florida, who have been coming since 2006, you know, they, they their parents now, they were teenagers when they came for the first time, and now they're bringing their kids. 
And even though we're not doing shows in Florida anymore, you know, that happened a few times in the last few years that we were down here. And it was, it's just really neat to see, you know, cause our whole, our whole purpose is to bring people joy. And we do that with, you know, nostalgic things, you know, things that bring people back to a time in their lives when things were simpler or happier or when a loved one was still around. And, you know, there are people who talk about things like that and, and what it means to, you know, like I'm sure Henry Winkler hears this all the time. You know, I used to watch your show with my dad and it means this and that. And, and so we hear those stories all the time and that's really, really touching just to know that it's not about dressing up in costume and buying a bunch of stuff. It's really about getting in touch with a part of ourselves that where there's a little more innocence and a little, a little more hope. And that's what conventions really bring, I think. Yeah, it previous memories, creating new memories. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like you mentioned Henry Winkler, and I think the reason why these guests continue to come back to the convention is because they're making memories too. You know, they yeah. love hearing how much of your life has been impacted just by these incredible moments that you're having at conventions. And I couldn't agree more with you, Sandy. I think that maybe, like you said, it, it's it's so much fun. There's so much to do, but the takeaway from it is so special. It's like, it's nothing that you can even really describe the feelings that you leave with each weekend, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I so- definitely, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to ask you the same question. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely really realized after going through the whole process how important these conventions are. Because so I think a lot of people kind of look at, oh, it's a Comic-Con. It's a bunch of weirdos putting on costumes and hanging out. But it's such an amazing, inclusive experience that really does have something for everyone. I mean, you have some of these actors that, you know, our parents watched growing up that they're excited to see. And you have modern people that newer people are excited to see it. And you have people making connections. I mean, I remember one of my favorite moments was there was a little girl who was dressed up as Pidge from Voltron. And she was sitting by herself in the corner, you know, terrified. She was alone. And I walked up and I, I was shooting some of the cosplay footage. And I was like, hey, I love your cosplay. Can I shoot you for our official cosplay video? And she looked terrified, like, you're, you want me? You want to shoot me? And I was like, you look awesome. You look great. It's a great look how you designed it. Oh, I love Pidge. Voltron's one of our favorite shows. And, you know, we actually had that actress at a show at two shows ago, um, Bex Taylor Klaus. And I was like, you know, that's so awesome. Like, you look fantastic. And you can just kind of see, you know, the eyes light up. And then all of a sudden she started crying. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you know who Bex is? I was like, yeah, we had it at our show last time. And she's like, and Bex is, a, you know, has come out uh, since as an actress. And so this little girl was like, I just came out to my parents two weeks ago because Bex came out and she gave me the inspiration to do that. And I was like, well, that's, that's fantastic. I'm so happy for you. You know, that's, that's amazing. And then I took her video and then a little while later I came back and she had found three other Voltron cosplayers Mm -hmm. and all of them were hanging out, (laughs) dancing and smiling, having the times of their lives. And it was such a rewarding experience to, and really makes you realize like how inclusion is so important, especially to these young people that have the internet screwing up their brains as much as possible, you know? And so that was, to me, was a real defining moment. Um, It's not in the documentary. The documentary is more about wearing costumes and buying stuff, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) just kidding. Um, No, I... (laughs) <laughs> I think that was actually at our Louisville event, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It was at the next event that we had. And that's it why was. it's not in the documentary. Yeah. Yeah. And you would at, have totally included something about that. Had, well, had and we have been. a we have a big part in the documentary about Parkland, you know, because the Parkland yeah. massacre was nearby. And that affected the documentary too, or it affected the convention also. And so there's a lot of weird stuff that happened outside of the convention that still influenced things. It affected, really- affected my world tremendously. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 I was friends with one of the, the children that was lost at Parkland. Oh my god, Patty. Yeah. So, and yeah. the efforts was to it too. But um, one thing, one thing you said—that's one thing I've always said about if you're at a convention. If you're at a convention and you see somebody cosplaying as a character you recognize and like, tell them that. You don't have to go up mm-hmm. and say, hey, that's a great Gogo 13 costume. Because sometimes they'll be like, you know what I, I'm dressed as? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I had, I had trick or treaters dressed as anime characters, and I was just like, <laughs> like it was like, hey, One Piece. I'm like, you know what this is? Like, yes, I do. Here you go. You, you, get, two my, pe- you get two pieces. You get my drink cool. here to, to oh stay my, awake. Oh, look at oh that. my go, goodness. Go plus ultra. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Well, uh, Stephen, to kind of to, to piggyback of, off what you said, I think one of the things that and and just because a, a couple of people were asking, so SuperCon. Um, you guys are no longer associated with Supercon. You guys rebranded to GalaxyCon. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to say was, Sandy, you and Mike have always been so huge into the community outreach and and giving back in any way that you guys can. And that was beautifully shown in this documentary as well. I think it's, it's a part that a lot of people are going to be like, wow, like this means it, it's it's you not. I'm trying to think of an appropriate way to say this you're changing lives and making people's lives better and, and helping people get through a day just by giving them the opportunity to to be with like-minded people, you know? I think that it's just, it's so wonderful that you guys, you know, did that for the people of Parkland, you know? Thank it's, you. Yeah. No, of course. Of course. Yeah, this th- this documentary, guys, it, it, it's it's a ride. There is highs, <laughs> there's, there's lows. You're going to see a lot of, of crazy things and you're going to see a lot of touching moments that are going to just pull at your heartstrings and be prepared, guys. Yep. Be prepared. It's uh, a roller coaster for sure. <laughs> uh, what, what are you both hoping uh, for the legacy of the film to be? Um, I mean, I think what's cool about it is that there hasn't, there have been other documentaries about conventions. Like there's a big Comic-Con one that, that I wasn't as big a fan of, but this is the first documentary that kind of shows the full nuts and bolts approach to it and kind of the multiple angles, just as opposed to here's a bunch of cosplay and here's a bunch of panels. And so I really hope that, you know, people watch it. Like I had, like my family watched it and my mom's never been to a Comic-Con or anything. And, but afterwards they were like, Oh, I get it now, you know, I understand and I understand why it's important. And that's kind of the hope that, I mean, our world is becoming more geekified, luckily already. I mean, I was a kid in high school. It wasn't cool to like anime or play Dungeons and Dragons (laughs) at all. And so now that's becoming more acceptable. And and that's great because again, it's, it's all about inclusivity. You know, we should allow people to be happy, you know, and do what makes them happy. And we're not the sheriffs of that you know nobody should be the sheriff of that so i kind of feel that hopefully the documentary opens a lot more people's eyes to the bigger picture on what these conventions can do what about you sandy i mean that's beautiful if if this story can help people realize that there's a place where they can fit in i mean then we've done god's work like it's just Mm -hmm. yeah Oh, oh man! It is. I've... <laughs> and, 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 it gets heavy real fast in this world. It's a laugh a minute, guys. You're gonna laugh. <laughs> well, well, I, well, I, well I, I will say this much, and this this goes back to when I first got there. Because I think I, my first show I went to was one of the Magic City ones, and um, I was just in awe of like, wow, it's multiple fandoms. It's not just you can go to a convention and you can tell what the organizers are into and what they're not. And the I, I think it captures this and what you what GalaxyCon now is really tries to get the full spectrum of what's everybody into. Let's give a little bit of that. Let's give something for everybody. And again, that goes back to why I loved working for Disney for as long as I did, where not everybody's going to be into Space Mountain and the Haunted Mansion. Well, you know what? Oh, oh, we could take a tour of uh, the hydroponics lab and you can discover that and everything else. Again, it's diversity and inclusion not just as far as people, but as far as offerings and knowledge and fandoms. And it's that where you can go up there, you can take off of that costume, and then somebody's be like, oh, hey, 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 come over here with us. Because yeah. you are you are because what you are putting your heart on your sleeve, you're putting your fandom on your sleeve when you go to these shows. You really are. And um, it's just so nice to to just, just find that the like-minded, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and Jude even mentioned it, but I think that's what kind of sets GalaxyCon like apart from other conventions is because both yourself, Sandy, and Mike have such a different variety of fandoms. And like Patty just said, it is completely covered. Anything that you guys want, you can find at GalaxyCon. And- well, what's funny is that the first superhero movie I ever liked, because I'm not into this world, I'm I really like 
the people who are into this world. I'm not into comics or anime or sci-fi or fantasy. I've never seen, I mean, I can't even remember the name of that silly show, Game of Thrones. That everybody loved. Like I didn't see a single episode. I'm not into oh, this. We got to cut her out, guys. But, we got to listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I love <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy, and my first favorite superhero was Groot. And um, I got to see Star-, Star Lord take his shirt off because that's the one property that I really like. Yeah. And it's just a hoot. It brings me back to that movie. It you know seeing them wrestle as those characters in the ring brings me back to a time just like everybody else. That's For how sure. it all works. Absolutely. And I love Casey's now jumping in. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I feel like um Patty, this would be a good time if you don't mind kind of giving us the quick rundown of Galax- Galaxy Con Live. Uh, if there's any upcoming events that you're able to tell us about, I think now would be. A great time for that. Sorry well, to well, friends and fans, every weekend at GalaxyCon Live, we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, what Mike and Sandy and 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 Casey and the brilliant people at, at GalaxyCon did was, when uh, society kind of uh, went on pause, uh, they took took this model and they brought it online. So throughout the weekends, uh, we have these events, which are fan themed. We'll have a reunion of, uh, of this cast here or this event here, or sometimes with the private signings, but fair amount of time, we'll have an event just like this, which is a, a live interactive Q and a where people are seeing it live. It's not something we'll tweet your questions in and we'll pick them. No, no, you're there. It's real time. You're seeing us make the mistakes and break wind and anything else that could possibly happen. So there's that, there's that fun thing, and it's just, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. We get to speak to uh, celebrities, get to talk about the work that they've done. I get to speak to them for a little bit. Then I get the privilege of reading off the audience questions and just seeing where we go. We usually do that for about forty-five minutes. Then afterwards, usually there's the opportunity to uh, have one-to-one chats with them, or sometimes even group chats. Uh, sometimes, so uh, we have a. Uh, we have a, a couple of some. Sometimes we'll do like pairings. Oh, okay. These two voice actors are so entrained in the character. You can you can have the opportunity to speak to both of them live. The it's usually recorded. We take a picture of it as well too. So we've we've taken uh, again the the opportunities have been taken on the virtual platform. Try to make as most of it as we can as far as options and offerings and entertainment, and it continuing to develop it to continuing to try to develop it as well too. So that's. That's GalaxyCon Live. You can find it at GalaxyCon.com. And we have got a ton of really good stuff coming up. Um, we're about ready to a lot, a lot of good stuff I can't mention yet. Um, but it's it everything that we're allowed to talk about there is all there. Uh, we just and the nice thing too, again, is that again, we go through all fandoms. We've got a very popular animation thing about to drop soon. I can't mention about it yet, but we're also going old school. I can talk about, we just uh, announced V the old uh, series with uh, Mark Singer <laughs> and Michael Ironside. And I reached out to a friend of mine in Venezuela that I know is a huge fan of this. I've been wanting to tell you about this for a week. And he was like, Oh, is it, what is this? And it, it turns out it's called alien invasion down there. And he's been like flooding. Is it so? And, and that's what we do. It's, it's just, just like, just like Sandy says that it, it's to, it's to bring, bring joy however and whatever format we can and that's, that's and you got recognized and stopped over and over again at new york comic con right and i got you i got stopped a couple of times are you the galaxy con guy i'm like i don't know do you like the galaxy con? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well yeah, yeah, it must be, yeah. well they were confused because like what are you doing here it's just like i'm i was i was i was loaned out it's all good it's all good yeah because you you, you live outside of the internet as well yeah <laughs> right you, you 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 are a person you live as in well. three dimensions Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Too. Now, Sandy, I'm waiting for some. Waiting to, now that this documentary is going to officially drop, I'm waiting for you to start get uh, get uh, recognized. Well, I have saved my red V neck shirts, and so I'm going to start wearing them with my skinny jeans and my Airbirds, all birds, and see if anybody <laughs> spots me in cosplay of myself. And one of the pops going to come out. We need some pops. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say in the Sandy cosplays too. We're going to start seeing the Sandy Cosplays at uh That would be great. Alex, the yeah, Let's hope so. Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> at, out of curiosity, Steven, uh, what, once you had this boiled down and uh, you were taking it around, so it's it's been on the it's been on the film festival circuit for about at least a year and a half now? Yeah, we premiered. We had our world premiere last year. Um, obviously, the pandemic, you know, messed up a lot for uh, 
for the movie as well as many other movies. But we did have an in-person premiere at the Florida Film Festival, which was nice. It was the opening night film there. Um, Cause I'm, I was in Orlando for a long time. So it was a kind of a nice homecoming festival there for that. But um, we played at a couple other festivals, the Melbourne Independent Film Festival too. And, uh, but you know, a lot of festivals weren't happening over the past year. They were doing it virtual only. And yeah. it's like, yeah, you can give us $160 to play your movie on the internet to have someone pirate. And I was like, mm, you know, <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> not, not the same. Yeah, not yeah. the same. Um, but I'm glad we'll we'll be coming out this Tuesday, the 9th. Um, it'll be available on iTunes, Prime Video, Vudu, YouTube, Vimeo, DirecTV, like anywhere your like your Apple Television or Roku can probably find it, as well as Blu-ray and DVD through Amazon. Now, uh, Blu-ray and DVD versions. Are there any extra features? No, they would. Okay. They're, they would not give us let us do any extra features, unfortunately. But. Um, no, they're not. They're oh, not. we could have had so many bloopers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, I've got an hour of deleted scenes. <laughs> so we could do that, and we could do a commentary track. I mean, the, it's, yeah. it's, it's open See, for, for future like your double, double disc editions. A commentary I mean, track would be insane. I feel like I could have made an entire movie just on parking footage. <laughs> like problems. Literally, I had over an hour of just parking. Some yeah. problems but you know that's not nearly as exciting as like somebody getting hit in the head with a piece of plate glass from the ceiling so it w yeah so there's minimal of that but there's a lot more exciting things that happen <laughs> or a vortex of wind in the convention hall <laughs> we will be dropping a few uh exclusive scenes over the next couple days on some other websites that'll be popping up um so that'll be fun to start kind of releasing some stuff that's cool. And I, I, I just got to say, Stephen, um, I've known, we've known each other for 20 years. Yeah. We started oh, yeah. out at independent yeah, theater when you were starting, I was, I was doing independent comedy when you were doing independent feature stuff this way too. And I know you're a, you're a narrative film sort of guy. And I just want to say for somebody that came outside of the comfort zone to do a documentary, <laughs> you've really done a great job on this, bro. Yeah. You really have. Thank you. And, and I'm one and done. I'm out now. No more. No more documentaries. <laughs> going back to horror movies. I'm out. You're no so more. good at it. I, th I think. <laughs> I think you do. You know, again, well, for when, the right when, paycheck, when, you know, do anything. Well, <laughs> when, when the when the inspiration hits you and everything on else, but uh, I, I I definitely think you've really you re you re you really shine, and I'm really proud of. Uh, again, you you came out oh, your your comfort you. zone. So good on you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, we, it was an experience for sure. We, we do have people asking Steven if there's going to possibly be a follow up. So, surviving Galaxy Con would be, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know yeah. how you would do a follow up. I think a series more so than, than a follow up. I think a series would make more sense. You know, do an episode in each city, mm. you know, follow it around, um, which we did retain all of the television rights from the movie. So, if we ever wanted to do that, we could. Noted. Mm, well, uh, too. Before we, before we do wrap it up, um, I just want to let everyone know that before we go off air, we are going to be playing the trailer for Surviving Supercon, which Stephen already mentioned, will be out on Tuesday. So before we do wrap this up, Sandy, Stephen, any final thoughts you want to leave us with? Ladies first. Um, pizza is awesome. <laughs> We're going to definitely celebrate with pizza on Tuesday. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I'm going to buy 10 boxes of Papa John's pizza and just like leave it outside for two hours. And then is that how you're it. decorating the premiere? That's how I'm going to, yeah, Back. that's how I'm going to celebrate. Um, yeah, I, I get to see Steven in person next week. I'm very excited. Flying out yeah. to LA on Sunday. Oh, yeah. are you going premiere to the premiere on Monday? Oh, yeah. that's yeah. so exciting. Of course, of course. Yay. Yes, that's great. Yep. That's I mean, how often amazing. is a movie made about you? Like, this doesn't happen very often. So. Yep. I have to admit, yeah. thanks to this movie, I, I now have an IMBD credit, which I was completely oblivious to. And I was like, yeah, ah, I'm what? so excited I, about I'm that. I'm like, ah, so I do. <laughs> oh, my goodness, my goodness. Well, I, yeah. I'm no star, I'm no star lord taking his shirt off, but uh, I did put uh, I did put a shirt on. Uh -oh. oh, I oh, noticed. Oh, I totally saw that. Classic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that little light. Yeah, little yeah. I, I figured you would notice that. I was going to pull it out. Yeah, I, I, pull, I pulled, pulled, pulled this out because you know, you don't, you never throw away the good shirts. Yeah. I designed that. 
You did? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looks comfy. You you mentioned many hats, so I thought I yes. would point out that in addition to all the things that you see in the dock, I designed that logo. Nice. Oh, that is wearing a Sandy Martin original <laughs> oh, casual wear. It is, it is but, but multiple multiple yep, pockets. There you go. He's got the pin. <laughs> Yep. Oh. And uh, Sandy, we also wanted to mention that your book is available, I believe, on galaxycon.com. So make sure That's to right. also check out Love Prince, which is a book by Sandy, and it is it, it's wonderful. And mm -hmm. it's a book for everybody Thank too. You. So yeah. Yay. It's about how you make love on your own without needing to rely on other people. That, that came out wrong. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounded kind of off. <laughs> That's an interesting interpretation of it. Not that kind of book, guys. Not that kind of book. Anytime you want. <laughs> and you can make love to yourself anytime you want. That's a different book. <laughs> That's the next book. <laughs> <laughs> Josie would be happy to illustrate that one too, I'm sure. <laughs> well, guys. Oh, Josie. <laughs> <laughs> on we could do a documentary just on him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, on that note. Yeah, on that note. <laughs> no, on that <laughs> note. Sandy, Stephen, thank you so much for making this happen. And Patty, thank you so much yeah. for being so wonderful. And, you know, I always love virtually getting to see you and in person. <laughs> I'm so glad you're, you're doing well. And so I guess before we wrap it up, guys, we're going to play you guys the trailer for Surviving Supercon. We'll see you guys real soon. Thanks. See you later. Watch the movie. <laughs> Supercon is a convention for anything you can think of in the geek genre. Comic books, anime, video games, cosplay, wrestling. I have the attitude that doesn't matter. We will put forth the best show we possibly can. Is it going to be exactly how we planned? No. Supercon has always been about entertaining people for every hour of the day. You're dealing with an event with 50,000 some odd people over the course of four days. Things are going to happen. Let me out! Let me... Mike, Mike, yeah. stop it. It's our job to make it look smooth on the outside, but backstage, you're trying to wrangle cats. They're not kicking out everybody. They, they, it's fire marshal thing. You gotta come this way. The guards aren't doing their job. It's organized chaos. How's that it. happening? I have to go fix it. Sometimes the police have to get involved, and sometimes people go to jail. I need the cops to court side right now. I mean, Lydia's mother almost got murdered. I know. Just leave. Pretty much no sleep at all. I don't know how I survive these weekends, but every year I do it, and every year I make it happen, and I survive. And could it be cleaner? Sure. You let me know when she's out. I gotta see Star Lord with his shirt off.